Welcome to Maplewood United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you're joining us this morning. And uh, maybe you're even more glad that we're virtual and you didn't have to go out and play in the snow this morning. <laughs> it, it really isn't too bad, but uh, welcome. And we're glad that you're here. Some of the things we want to lift up as we're headed to that Christmas season, I think I've told you that one of our goals is to have some of those things that we love that help us experience the joy of Christmas in the best way that we can in this season, while at the same time recognizing that uh, if you're able to gather with anybody, we want it to be with your family this year. So we're going to do a virtual Christmas Eve service at 7 o'clock, which will have all the music you love, we'll be telling the Christmas story, and you'll be able to stream that into your home or watch it later if you want to. Then as that service ends, we're going to go outside at 8 o'clock sharp and do the candlelight service, light candles and sing Silent Night, which we will also stream. But what we encourage you to do is to just step outside your front door and join us, whether it's a flashlight or a real candle or your phone um, as your light, to step outside in your neighborhood and with your family and sing Silent Night with your neighbors, that sense of knowing we are all together and take the light of Christ out into our neighborhoods because we need that. And if you think it's too cold or you just don't want to go outside, stand in your front window with a light and sing. And some of, I put Dominic on the spot, some of that is, I am not a singer, and if you thought I should sing on my front lawn alone, it wouldn't happen. So I thought I'd give you somebody that even if you don't want to sing, you can hum along while while Dominic sings it. So we hope you'll join us for that, and we hope that'll bring a little bit of Christmas into your home um, and give you a chance to have that. We will continue live stream only services for this period of time as we go through this and we'll see as we start to figure out what it looks like now that the vaccine is out and we celebrate that as well. Don't think there is another announcement It's called Christmas caroling. Um, as you've probably seen on the slideshow, we are um, going to be Yes, my director was telling me where to go. Um, As you probably saw in the slideshow, we are working on a Christmas caroling event that will happen this Saturday from 5 to 8. If you want to just watch and sing along from the comfort of your home, just watch on Facebook. If you want to um, help participate via Zoom from your own home, um, contact Kiri Kellogg, and she will set you up with that Zoom link Um, and any instructions. I will be leading everybody from here along with Simon. So now we enter into our worship with the lighting of the Advent candle. One of the things I try to say at least once during the Advent season is some of the reason we don't play as many Christmas songs during this four weeks is that this is supposed to be a time of preparation, but not preparation for Christmas and Jesus' birthday, a time where we're kind of putting things in order because we're anticipating and looking forward to Christ's return when everything gets set right. So we count down with excitement and anticipation of what is to come. So we welcome you as we watch. No, do you have to sing we'll the sing song first? We'll watch. Yep. Go ahead.
proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, who has looked with favor on me, a lowly servant. From this day, all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is the name of the Lord, whose mercy is on those who fear God, from generation to generation. The arm of the Lord is strong, and has scattered the proud in their conceit. God has cast down the mighty from their thrones, and lifted up the lowly. God has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich empty away. God has come to the aid of Israel, the chosen servant, remembering the promise of mercy, the promise made to our forebears, to Abraham and his children forever. God spoke through the prophets in many times and many ways. But in these final days, God spoke to us through a son. The son is the light of God's glory and the imprint of God's being. We light the third Advent candle as a sign that God is with us, bringing light and joy amid every conceivable darkness. Come what may, we are not alone. We wait, we hope, trusting that the one born to Mary is fully God. Jesus, you are Emmanuel. Will you please join me now in prayer? Who is like you, God most high? Drawing near to those who are low and in need to raise them up. We thank you that you have not left us alone, but that in your son Jesus, you come to be with us as one of us. May we sense you near us even now through your spirit. May we take heart in our darkest and most fearful times trusting that you abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. And by your grace, may others know through what we do that God is with them. Amen. Our next song is Tell Out My Soul. Tell out my soul the greatness of the Lord, unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice tender to me, the promise of God's word in God my
as Simon switches back to the piano, um, our next hymn is uh, Ye Who Claim the Faith of Jesus. Um, this is, I'm not going to lie, a relatively new one to myself, but um, I thought the words were appropriate for today. And as we enter into this time of prayer, I invite you to make this be a time where you slow down. Um, whether you take out the list of that who are on your prayer list or ours, whether you just take some time to be quiet, to let this be a time that you are opening your heart to God and maybe even to yourself to hear what you need to lift up to God. So let us be in the spirit of prayer.
Holy God, we call out your name in a time in our world where things seem really dark. But we are in a season where we are reminded, O oh God, that you are truly with us, not some far distant looking down, wondering what will happen, but walking beside each and every one of us, helping us through this time, feeling our pain and our struggle. So, holy God, for this, for your love that brought you into our lives in the truest sense, holy God, we give thanks. And as we enter in this time of worship, we understand because of your love and our trust for you, that we can give you all of the things that worry us, that make us feel afraid, that leave us broken on the floor. So for each of those situations, O oh God, we truly give them to you. Not because we need you to prove your love, but because we believe you care. So the broken hearts of those that have lost someone we give them to your care, O oh God. To those who have lost their jobs or their livelihoods, their businesses during this time, we give them to you, O oh God. To those whose lives have been turned upside down, changed in ways they never imagined and left them feeling off balance, we give them to you, O oh God. To those who each day try simply to put one foot in front of the other and keep moving, we give them to you, O oh God. For all of those places and more, we rejoice in your love. So hear our prayers as we pray them in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our next song is um, one of my favorite Advent songs. Um, Beth, I mentioned that we're singing some Advent music uh, right now. Um, it's called All the Earth is Waiting, and I think it does a good job of really talking about this time of waiting. We're not waiting for Jesus to be born, um, or, but what that means today. So. Oh, 
So we continue our series following Adam Hamilton's in, incarnation, and this week the name is Emmanuel, and the passage continues really from the passage we saw last week from Matthew 1, 20 through 23, which starts with, Joseph thought about these things. An angel of the Lord came to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, descendant of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife because the baby in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to bring about what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be pregnant. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. So I don't know whether you've ever kind of paid attention to one minute he's Jesus and he's, and he's the one that's going to save his people and the next minute he's Emmanuel, God with us. But it's part of this piece to me of the understanding of the incarnation of Christ. The, as he embodies God, there are so many parts of who God is that we need to understand that all of these names, Lord, Savior, Emmanuel, help us to fully understand what it means about who God is. And in this chapter, we're looking at that wonderful Christmas name, Emmanuel, God with us. And thinking about it, and if you saw the title to the chapter is Emmanuel in the midst of a pandemic, is asking that question is, what does it mean that God is with us? It's one of those things when we look back at scripture, it's easy to see this sense of God with us because Jesus is born as a human and he walks with his disciples and he talks to people and he shows them who God is. In fact, says, if you've seen me, you've seen God. So some of that then goes, okay, so 2,000 years later, how do we understand that God is with us here? What does it mean? Now, Scripture invites us to have a couple layers of that. And the first is, why is it so important in the story of Christ is to understand that God isn't this far-off, distant God who has no idea what it feels like to work an eight-hour day, has never truly lost someone he's loved, never had been tempted, in Christ we get to see God walks the same roads we walk, walks through a life. He's born as a baby, not in a castle where his life is perfect. He has the same struggles from day one that we can experience in our own lives, that struggle to survive, that struggle to make a life and to find a way and to find his purpose. And we have those moments where we see where he loses his friend and he weeps. We see his frustration when he enters Jerusalem and he sees that, you know, it's really not going to turn out okay because these people just don't get it yet. We see in his compassion in his life that he knows what it means to walk in our shoes. That's God with us. And I think about those places where we've had similar experiences. It's so much easier to see someone who has had the same experience you have or similar in some senses to walk with you and help you through it. To think about someone who has lost a child in an accident or lost a child before it was quite born. How much different the voice of someone who has had a similar experience in helping that person to heal. That's the sense of understanding that God has walked in our shoes. He knows what it's like to be us. Then there's this piece of how do we understand he's still with us, even though he's already died on the cross. And that's that piece of Jesus saying, I will be with you till the end of the age. The sense that here's this picture of God's love that we see in Christ born in a manger. Christ loved us, God loved us so much that he sent his only son to show us how much. 
And in that, we can then extend and understand that God wasn't just with us in that moment. God is with us in this moment. And that he loves us and cares about us. Now, one of the struggles that I see and we've seen most clearly throughout this pandemic and all of the rules and trying to figure out, do you have the church, don't you have church, do you come together in mass groups, is the struggle of what does it mean that God's with us. And be careful, there are others that believe completely different things, but as United Methodists, we believe God is with us. He doesn't always cure our illness. He doesn't always fix our problem. He always walks with us through it. And for all of the things that we can't control and we have no power over, we can entrust them to God and let him carry them. So through this, some of the different kinds of views as well, if I believe enough, God will protect me. If that were the way the world worked, why do people who are faithful Christians who give their lives to serving God get cancer? Die young. Those aren't signs that God isn't with them. In fact, so many of them can testify to the very fact that God was with them as they walked through that darkness. In fact, that it was God's presence in those moments that made those moments bearable. So the caution is, is that it isn't about saying to God, if you make my life perfect, I know you're on my side. It's the fact that scripture tells us, this story of Jesus' birth tells us, God is on our side, end of story. There's no buts, there's no conditions, there's no maybes, there's no sometimes. It's that God is always on our side. Now, if we wanted that to translate into the world was perfect, then we would have to be willing to do what God asked us to 100% of the time. And that's part of that piece of understanding. The world is kind of messy. We're not perfect, and there are lots of things that happen, but God isn't just saying, I'm going to fix the world. Part of the other part of God being with us is God says, I'm going to fix the world through you. One of the images in scripture that always brings me up short is the passage in Revelations when the new kingdom comes and it says, and there was no temple in the city because God was with his people. Why do we still need churches? Why do we still need to be the body of Christ? Because the world needs us to be the hands and feet. God needs us to live out so that those that are totally lost, confused, or lonely know that God is with them. One of the images that Adam brought up was the images of the nurses in the COVID units. And I don't know about you, but I've had enough experiences with doctors to know they're not all kind. Yet, in this time, in this pandemic, how many nurses and how many hospitals are sitting holding the hands of your loved ones? Our loved ones. Whispering, you're not alone. You're okay. You're loved. How many of them have taken the time in a crazy schedule when they're overwhelmed and probably just exa as exhausted as so many others to make sure FaceTime calls happen, to make sure that loved ones get to tell? Scripture tells us when we do that, when we dare be the presence of love, then we are God with these people. I think of the man early on whose wife was in the COVID hospital, but she wasn't quite on a ventilator, and he sat outside for every meal, made signs every, every day to tell her he loved her and that he was there. He was with her. 
God challenges us as Christians not just to build a building, not just to gather for our own purposes. God's purpose for the church, for us as believers, is to continue to show people his love so that the world knows that God is with them. We as believers and those that have accepted Christ are partly supposed to accept that as trust. It is a thing. God is with us. No questions asked. No days when he takes a day off. No day when he decides we're headed the wrong direction so far that he gives up. He is always with us. Always there to hold us. Always there to lift us up. Always there to carry the things that we can't. The only way that that helps us not be afraid is not that I don't get in a plane and think, well, I'm not afraid because God thinks I'm so important, he won't let this one crash. I get a plane and say, my life has always been in God's hands. It will be what it will be. I still put my seatbelt on. And part of this journey of being God in the world is that indeed we have to think about how do we care for one another? How do we embody Christ in a world that needs to see Christ? How do we live out the love that God has shown us to every single person we encounter? The importance of the name Emmanuel is to ring true to understand that the God we believe in knows what it's like to live our life and never leaves us alone in the dark. Will you pray with me? Gracious and holy God, your love for us has continued and shown its light in every dark place as we walk through this pandemic, O oh God. Let us be the light, even as we see your light around us. In Jesus' name, amen. So I leave you with those words that God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Have a blessed week. Our closing hymn today is I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I want to follow Jesus. God sent the
能。